Welcome back to another special episode of Organic Chemistry, where today we're going to rank the different pieces of glassware. So the rules for today are that we have to use normal glassware. We can't use anything too esoteric. The utility as a piece of glassware will be considered, and I'm also only using glassware that's present in ChemDraw. So there's some S-tier glassware that I'm not going to include, such as a Rotovap, such as a Schlank manifold, as well as a watch glass. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with one that's easy, like this long neck funnel. Now this funnel has way too long of a neck. You know, the longer the neck, the more likely it is that it's broken. I think these things only tend to last six months in most labs that I've been in, unless they're hidden or they're made of plastic. And if they're made of plastic, they're even worse. So best case scenario, I mean, this has got to be C tier. Now, if we look at the like slightly shorter funnel, now these tend to like break 40% of the time, or maybe 40% of them even survive. And the longer you have them, the more quickly they become shorter and shorter neck funnels because they tend to break. And then they end up being sharp and you think it's not going to be a big deal, but it is a big deal and you cut yourself. So these are like slightly better. I'm going to probably put the funnel in B tier because funnels are actually really useful. Wide neck funnel, definitely A tier. Super useful. You can put a big piece of cotton in and stuff filters way faster. Uh, if you're trying to do a filtration through a plug of sealight or something, the longer neck funnel that's skinnier would be a little bit better, but a wide mouth funnel is a good piece of glassware. Now, if we look at a, a column like this one, columns are super useful. They're used for purifying stuff, but you usually aren't looking forward to using them. So I'm going to put the column in A tier. It's still a very good piece of glassware, but it's not like S tier. Now, three neck round bottom flask. I hate these. They're such a pain to clean. Yes, they're useful in terms of you can have multiple stuff going in and out, and they look really cool to non-scientists if you have like a balloon sticking in one of them and you have a reflux condenser. Like, sure, that's cool. And you can have an addition funnel. So they are useful, but they're also kind of a pain to clean and they're easy to break. Now, that being said, I haven't seen as many of these break as I have the long neck funnels. So I'm going to put a three neck round bottom flask probably in B tier. Now, let's get a couple easy ones out of the way. Pear-shaped flasks, they just suck. Pear-shaped flask goes right to F tier. Screw pear-shaped flasks. Now this gas generator, now it's a special piece of equipment. They're super expensive to get made because they're all fancy and they have intricate tubing inside. Now these are like one of the older looking pieces of glassware. If you have them in a modern lab, they're fairly rarely used. And you can usually get away with just using a two neck round bottom flask or a one neck round bottom flask with a Klyacin adapter. So these aren't like super necessary. These things think that they're really important, but they're not F tier. Now, glass syringes. You might be a big fan of glass syringes, but in most labs that I've worked in, it's a pretty big gamble as to whether or not the glass syringe actually plunges properly and seals. So because these things are so finicky and easy to like have no longer work properly, E tier. Still useful, but you know, not, not that great. Now, two neck round bottom flask. They're less common than three neck round bottom flasks in my experience. <clears throat> However, I still think that they're trying to be a bit cooler than they actually are. The advantage here is they're like, you know, slightly easier to store and not break, but you know, they're about as bad as a three neck round bottom flask. So I'm gonna put them in B as well. Now a socks lid extractor. You always talk about them and people are really excited to show you like one reaction that actually uses them, except in my experience, they tend to clog and not work properly. And you always wanna like have more filtration media such as cotton to kind of like prevent junk from going down. And that e probably stops it from working most of the time. And the one time that it does work, it just sucks all the solid through anyway. So Soxlet Extractor, also F tier. Okay, so now if we're using a Dean Stark Trap, Dean Stark Traps are great. Okay, I love Dean Stark Traps, S tier. Super useful, azeotrope over your water and your toluene. A Dean Stark Trap is everything that a Soxlet wishes it was. Now, you might not be familiar with this piece of glassware. This is a solid addition funnel. And the few times I've seen solid addition funnels, they tended to be an OPRD where someone was adding like benzoyl peroxide through a solid addition funnel and then it started grinding and it exploded. So, you know, these things are good in theory. I'm always worried that these just block up and like get full of wax. I'm going to put it in E tier. Now, Erlenmeyer flask, easy S tier. Super useful for stirring stuff, but not having too much head space, like in terms of like a wide mouth that stuff can shoot out of. It contains stuff and they're easy enough to wash. They don't have any weird edges. So Erlenmeyer flasks are great. That's definitely S tier. Same with beaker. I mean, like a beaker is almost an A tier. Like beakers are pretty useful, but they do have their issues, but I love beakers. So beaker is also going to be an S tier. Now an addition funnel with a sidearm. So addition funnels are really useful. Without the sidearm, I didn't even include the addition funnel without a sidearm because it, it would be like worse than F tier, but an addition funnel with a sidearm is pretty good. But these things do tend to break. 
And, you know, because they still have that tiny little stopcock where you're, like, trying to add a solution, if stuff is precipitating out, it just clogs. These things can be kind of annoying to deal with. They're usually the piece of glassware that accumulates by the sink. <clears throat> and then nobody cleans. So uh, then you finally need one. You have to clean one. And you hope maybe you can just use a wet one and it's fine. Or maybe you can stick it in the oven for five minutes after acetoning it. Maybe all the acetone will go away. So I'm going to put uh, the addition funnel in D tier. Now, burette. They're super expensive. They're calibrated for water. It's kind of annoying to read the meniscus, but you can do it properly if you have like a piece of card with, with a black marker on it or a black line on it. Um, but beyond early analytical chemistry, you basically never use them again unless you're really carefully titrating stuff. But usually if you're doing a titration in a research lab, you can just do that with like a syringe. So I'm going to put the burette in E tier. Maybe I'll put it in D tier. Like it, you can get calibrated solutions with it. So, you know, maybe D tier. Okay. The gas adapter. These things are just asking for trouble because you have an open system until you don't. F tier. Sidearm filter flask. This is pretty useful, but it's like a worse Erlenmeyer. I mean, it's better in the sense that it has a little bit of added utility, but these things always require a three-fingered clamp if you're doing a filtration, and you don't really want to use a three-fingered clamp. You're like, oh, it's flat. It'll just sit. It's fine. But if you're using like any tubing at all on the sidearm, it just wiggles too much and it ends up falling over and breaking. So these things are like C tier. It's too bad. They could be better. Now, glass stoppers, very overrated. The one thing glass stoppers do is C's, E tier, but they do keep stuff in. So that's the only thing it has going for it. Round bottom flask, S tier, super useful piece of glassware, dirt cheap. If you break one, it's not the end of the world, but it depends on the size of the, uh, of the bore. If it's a 1420, it would probably be B tier, but if it's a 2440, S tier, absolutely. Now, Klyson adapter is useful because you can have like an addition funnel on top, or you could have a sidearm adapter going to like nitrogen or uh, like a purge potentially, or like a balloon of argon. So Klyson adapters are pretty good. Now, they're usually pretty big, so they don't fit in drawers and stuff. So I'm going to put it in B tier because it's a little bit annoying to store those things. Now, separatory funnels, very useful. However, they form emulsions. And so like, it, yeah, it's convenient to get stuff off the bottom, but you know, you can always pour stuff off the top. Now it's better than pouring out of a beaker to try and get everything out of there. So like it has that going for it, but these things have the same problem where it can be hard to see the middle line, stuff can start precipitating out and then clogging the stopcock. The best chance I could give it would be like B tier, but I'm not feeling B tier. I think the separatory funnel's gotta be C tier. Now glass fritted filter, these things are S tier until they clog. So I'm gonna put it between S tier and A tier, because when these things work, they're amazing. But if they start clogging and someone doesn't clean it out properly, then it, they become totally useless and you're willing to spend your time gambling on them anyway, but it usually ends up being a waste of time. But when they work, oh, a good a good glass frit is like S plus. I love glass fritted filters. Now, three-way connector, the only time you'd ever use this is if you're just gonna be doing a distillation. They're pretty useful. Now, if this has like a good glass uh, adapter that'll fit a thermometer properly and seal properly, that'd be a little bit better. But in this case, uh, it doesn't have too much utility. It's pretty pretty middle of the line. Like there's not too much you can do with it other than that. So I'm probably gonna say it's like D tier. Graduated cylinders, they tend to be too tall and break. Uh, and even if you put those like little plastic rings on that are supposed to prevent them from shattering, they can still shatter sometimes. Now in this case, this one doesn't even have one of those rings on it. So it's a little bit worse but you can measure liquids. And I'd say most of the time if I'm measuring liquids and it's not with a beaker, it's not super precise, probably use a grad cylinder. Grad cylinder can be B tier. Now the condensers. So here we have a Klyson condenser. Klyson condenser is pretty useful. It's got enough water flow that it typically does the job for distillations or refluxes. Klyson condenser is probably gonna be S tier. Now West condenser would be S tier, except every time you use it, it doesn't cool enough. It's like the sexy sleek version. You're like, oh, this is going to go in the base bath well. It doesn't take as much space up, but then it doesn't do a very good job cooling. So I'm going to say West Condenser is C tier. <clears throat> now the Graham Condenser, great in theory, tons of like surface area to like cool your solution, but these things clog up as discussed by explosions and fire. These things are very niche for that reason. They're also kind of like a pain for glass blowers to make, but they can be made. I'm going to put it in D tier. Now this last one, this last one is called an align condenser. These things are pretty good because they can't clog, but they also have like a, a more surface area to help condense stuff. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this one in B tier. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you disagree, let me know in the comments and I hope you have a great day.